as you know, Loudwire is naming Mammoth WVH the Artist of the Year. So congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely crazy. Obviously, you grew up around music. And did you always know that you wanted to be a musician? I know it's kind of a little bit of a cliche question, but. No, no, I I want to do stuff with video games when I was little. I was just all about that. I was like, I want to be a video game designer. And then I went to a, (laughs) I went to like a camp where you learned how to do it. And I was like, this is way too hard. I don't want to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Growing up, all I, all I ever did was play the drums and tried to figure out like what Danny Carey was doing and and uh and on the bass try to figure out what the hell les claypool was doing and 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 all that kind of stuff so i have to ask why did you make the decision to perform all of the instrumentation on your album and going forward do you think you'll do that again or will you have your touring musicians play with you i'll definitely do it again um just because it's it's so much fun uh at first i just wanted to it was like a personal challenge i wanted to see if i could do it um, just like, uh, you know, like Dave Grohl did with the first Foo Fighters album. That's what I was really inspired by. It's like, I can play it all too. Why, why, why don't I try to do this? Um, and, uh, and yeah, after having done it, I can say that it was so much fun and so rewarding to put it together that I'm really excited to do it again. It's been obviously a very crazy year. Um, one thing that I do want to bring up that I think deserves a bit of recognition was when the Grammys asked you to play Eruption as a tribute for your father. And I think it was extremely respectable and badass that you didn't just say yes to them because they're the Grammys. You went with your gut and your intuition and you declined. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, no, it's just, uh, I just didn't think it was the right thing to do. You know, I've been, uh, I I think dad would have been like, why the hell would you do that? (laughs) You know, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm my own musician. I'm my own person. I've done everything I can to, to, to find my own sound and to, and to be my own musician, not to just go up there and play pop for everybody. Uh, just didn't really jive with what I wanted to do or whatever, what I ever want to do. Now that we speak about this, you were just nominated for a Grammy <laughs> with distance for best rock song. How do yeah, you feel about that achievement? And, you know, did you, did you ever think that that was possible? I had no idea that that would be possible uh, at all. Um, it's absolutely crazy. Um, and in a way uh, it's, it's validation for, for not going up there and, 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 and being my dad and, and playing his stuff. It's, it's, it's a validation that what I make is good enough on its own. And I don't have to go up there and, and play Panama or play eruption to, to be worth a shit, you know, not only did distance go number one, but also don't back down did as well. So when <laughs> that, when you heard that news, how did you feel? Did that kind of change your perspective on anything? Yeah, that was definitely, um, when don't back down went number one, that was definitely the, uh, a turning point in my mind. I think uh, it could be argued just because of the times and, uh, and, you know, plenty of people did argue that it was a fluke uh, that, that distance did, did really well. Um, But it was the fact that don't back down actually went number one proof that, uh, Hey, you know, maybe what I'm doing isn't, isn't uh, so bad. (laughs) When distance did come out uh, for the first time over a year ago, you said initially that you were a little bit afraid to play just because of the emotional connection that was attached to it. How did you feel the first time that you did tackle that song from the stage? And has it kind of gotten a little bit easier over time? Nah, it's, it's hard every time. And I think it's just always, uh, it's always going to be like that. And that's just how music is sometimes. (laughs) You've been playing in large scale venues since you were a teenager when you were in Van Halen. How is that dynamic different when you're headlining as your own in your own band? It's way different. I mean, with Van Halen, you had everybody was there to look at Eddie Van Halen and look at David Lee Roth. So I could just kind of do my thing and fly under the radar and (laughs) be comfortable. Uh, But now it's like I'm I'm the dude that everybody's looking at. And that is so unnatural uh, and doesn't match up with my personality type whatsoever. (laughs) But uh, you just, you know, I, I, I love and care about the music so much that I made that you just kind of step up for the moment and, uh, and just go for it because, uh, you know, it's just a part of the job. <laughs> do you like the big venues or do you prefer like smaller, more intimate ones? I like 
any venue where people are there to have a good time. It could be two people. It could be 200 people. It could be 200,000 people. Never played for that many people before, but as long as people are, are, are there to just have a good time and not sit there with their arms folded, like, like you're doing something to piss them off. I, I, I don't think it can get any better than that. <laughs> well, you guys got brought out on tour with Guns N' Roses this year. How did that come into play? Uh, that was uh, crazy. We just, uh, we got a call saying that uh, the big three of uh, Axel, Duff and Slash had agreed that we, they wanted us to be the opener and uh, asked us, I mean, what were we going to say? What were we going to say? No. Uh, so we were uh, ecstatic. And I, I mean, I couldn't believe it because we hadn't even done a show yet, um, which is why we did two little uh, quick club shows before the very first show in Hershey. Um, but yeah, the tour was was absolutely wonderful. They were all so kind and so supportive. And they even had me up on the, on the last two shows to play uh, Paradise City with them, which was absolutely crazy. I'm a, I'm a huge Guns N' Roses fan, and I know you had a couple of encounters with Axel, but I like to, you know, wave the, the flag for Axel and say, you know, like, he's not as much of a jerk as everybody thinks. No, he was he was so wonderful to us, and he was uh, really funny, really funny, really great dude. Do you have any stories? Not too many, but uh, uh, I just uh, remember when I first met him, and he, uh, like, I put up my hand, I was like, hi, Mr. Rose, like, I didn't know how to... <laughs> deal with it and he just gave me a hug and was super just affable and just a really kind kind guy so like he told me he had watched the don't back down video and he loved it and it's like wow you didn't have to do that thank you (laughs) well upon releasing your debut album and then like you said that was your first big tour to hear a compliment like that from someone who's known for being such a perfectionist like how did that feel Oh, it was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, just the fact that knowing that he had even checked it out and then enjoyed it was, was, uh, was a ridiculous compliment. So another reason we want to give you this title is we're, uh, very aware of the feuds that you often get into with people on Twitter. I'm um, sure the comment section is going to be stoked about this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they listen. never like when you guys talk about me. It's so funny. <laughs> The internet is full of stupidity and somehow you always manage to clap back and say something really witty back to them. How do you kind of like weed out which of the trolls you're going to pay attention to versus which one you're going to ignore? I don't know. You can kind of tell when, when some are just like somebody who's just kind of bored doom scrolling and feels like say, saying something negative, or if it's like somebody who feels like it's their job to be a troll, those are the ones where you just kind of block and move on. But uh when people make a really dumb joke or well, not so much a dumb joke, but like just try to try to say something mean, those are the easy ones to just kind of flip around with a joke. And, and then all of a sudden a bunch of other people go and swarm them and then they kind of get a taste of their own medicine. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's funny. I'm uh, sure. I'm just kind of <laughs> keeping the cycle of negativity going occasionally, but you know what, whatever it's social media. Sometimes it's fun. One of the ones that stuck out to me the most was, uh, the one woman who was complaining about you cursing on Twitter and you were like, you're literally coming to see Guns N' Roses. Do you know how many curse words are in their songs? Yeah. <laughs> they call themselves Guns and Fucking Roses. Like what, what, what the hell do you want from me? <laughs> um, awesome. Okay. So one of your next big um, things that you have going on is Mammoth, WVH and Dirty Honey are going to be going out on the Young Guns tour starting in the winter so what are your goals as far as you know being one of the emerging rock bands in the scene going forward with that just to to get out there and uh i I think the tour is very uh uh, aptly named because our plan is just to get out there and prove that uh, uh that rock has some competition and 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 that it's still very much a viable genre in this day and age and that we're just here to come have a good time and kick some ass how do you feel about the notion of bringing rock back into the mainstream? Or do you think that it should always kind of be the, the underdog genre a little bit? I don't know if it'll ever be back to how it was, but I do think it's kind of seeping into it a little bit. If you look at certain like Lord's album as a bunch of guitar on it, I think, you know, Miley Cyrus did like a practically a rock album. Uh, it's, it's guitar based music is very much uh, becoming more prevalent, which is exciting to see. And I think uh, it's kind of, sneaking up on everybody. <laughs> so who else would be on your bucket list to go on tour with? Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters would be, that's the big dream right there. Just cause Dave is such a huge inspiration to me. 
them or, or ACDC. Cause that would just be ridiculous because they're one of my favorite bands. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's funny to even say that considering we just toured with guns and roses and that was just like a ridiculous pie in the sky, impossible, never going to happen dream. So you never know. <laughs> and aside from what you've already achieved so far, what are your other goals going forward? I just want to keep making music uh, that makes me happy to make and uh, hope other people enjoy it as well. Uh, this, this whole album cycle uh, has been an incredibly gratifying experience to, to release music that I am personally very proud of and had a great time making and to see it bringing joy to a lot of people. It's, uh, it's a really cool feeling. Is there anything you're going to approach differently when you go to eventually start working on the sophomore album, if you haven't started that already? I haven't officially started yet, no. But uh, uh, whenever we do, I would just like to uh, maybe uh, have it go by a little quicker. <laughs> you know, the first time, it, you know, I was trying to figure out who I was and it was just compiling a bunch of demos and and, and figuring out exactly what I wanted to do. But I think now that I've landed at the sound that I, that, that I, I know I want and know how to do, uh, I don't think it'll take six years to do anymore. And given what you've accomplished so far, what do you have to say for musicians who are starting out um, like yourself going forward? I mean, if you just keep it, I mean, it's, it, my dad always had great advice, great advice, which was just keep playing. You know, if uh, you, you can't expect anything more, uh, all you, if, if all you want to do is play, uh, the, the good will come, you know, as long as you enjoy yourself and you, and you have a good time playing, I don't think there's anything better, uh, that could come from that. Congratulations again on all your accomplishments and, and the Grammy nomination and everything. And we're really looking forward to seeing you out on the road and congrats yeah. again on being the artist of the year for Loudwire. That's crazy. Thank you so much. Absolutely crazy. And keep the trolls busy. <laughs> <laughs> Will do.